Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to take you through every aspect of this game, get you set for kickoff tonight. So you, you got the one and zero mindset to get to this point for Baylor. Now they need to do that and employ that 24 hour rule as he brings his Texas Tech Red Raiders into Waco to play Jen's alma mater on Saturday. These Baylor Bears How about a little Halloween football on the Brazos Baylor in West Virginia. About She's lived with type 1 diabetes since she was seven years old, hoping to inspire children like her. To, what do you see from what Lincoln Riley is doing with that offense and really what they've done to teams kind of all year long. The Astros rotation certainly took a huge hit this offseason when Garrett Cole took the money and ran all the way to the Bronx. So the last time these two teams met, the question was, could Baylor hang with this high flying Oklahoma offense? It's Fox 44 Sports with Matt Roberts. Hey there and good evening to you. Well, the Baylor Lady Bears will play their final regular season home game tomorrow night against their rival Texas. And while they will be back for the NCAA tournament in a couple of weeks, tomorrow night will be a time to celebrate the four seniors on this team, including All-American forward Lauren Cox. Cox came out of high school as one of the as the number one player in the country and has lived up to her billing, compiling a laundry list of awards and honors both on and off the court. And while she knows there's still a lot of work to do for the Lady Bears, she is looking forward to the celebration tomorrow night. It's going to be an emotional night. I think we've definitely left our mark. The Lady Bears could jump in at 7.30 tomorrow against Texas and will honor the four seniors at halftime of the game. On the men's side of things tonight, the TCU Horned Frogs putting a scare into the top ranked team in the land, but Kansas does hold on, so now Baylor will need a win over West Virginia and a Texas Tech win over Kansas on Saturday to claim their first title since 1950. Bear fans, get your guns up. While over in Auburn, Alabama, Buzz Williams and the Aggies getting a massive win over 17th ranked Auburn, moving to 15 and 14 on the season, 9 and 8 in SEC play. Look out for the Aggies. Maybe not this year, but the Aggies will be coming hard next year with Coach Buzz. And look out for the Baylor baseball team moving forward as well. They've shown over the first few weeks of the season that they are more than capable of beating teams the likes of LSU and Arkansas. But yesterday suffered a 12-2 setback against Texas State. But sometimes, especially with a young team, that's just the way baseball go. It's tough. One game, a lot of kids got a good opportunity, and so we moved on. The Bears will head off to the West Coast bright and early tomorrow morning for a three-game set with the Cal Poly Mustangs. Out in Abilene this afternoon, the Region 5 Men's Junior College Basketball Tournament got underway at Moody Coliseum. The McLennan Highlanders entering the day as the two-seed out of the North trying to win three games this weekend to get to the National Tournament. First up, taking on the Thunderbirds of New Mexico Junior College. We picked this one up in the first half here. Lorenzo Anderson dribbles, finds some space, and pulls up. To knock down the jumper, McLennan takes the two point lead. Next possession, Cameron Copeland gets in the paint here, works his way to the hoop. The finger roll gets it to go, tying the ball game up early on. But here comes New Mexico on offense. A nice pass to Terrence Lewis. He knocks down the J as the Thunderbirds lead by six. Still running here, a clean bounce pass. Lewis once again fights through the contact, but gets the friendly bounce to up the lead to eight at that point, as this one would come right down to the wire. But the Highlanders just did not have enough this afternoon, ending their season with a 66 62 loss to New Mexico Junior College. In the first game of the day, the Temple College Leopards had a tough task against the top seed from the West Clarendon. Early in the second half, Temple with some work to do. Kadarian Johnson, the nice feed of Carlton Lingard, cuts the Bulldog lead. Down a little bit there. Clarendon up 20 now. Corey Perkins, the jumper from the top of the key, gets it to drop to cut it to 58 to 40. The Bulldogs would go on a 14 4 run from that point and would not look back. Clarendon routes Temple out of the Region 5 tournament by a final score of 111 to 74. Stick around. We'll be right back after the break. It's Fox 44 Sports with Matt Roberts. I guess it is. That's what everyone else looks at. I, I watch his practice, boy. I don't see it. But <laughs> Jimbo Fisher having some fun with the coaches' poll rankings that came out today with Texas A&M at number 11.
Good evening to you. Welcome live outside Kyle Field. We're four weeks from right now. a and is going to be winding up their season opener with the Texas State Bobcats as Jimbo Fisher trying to get year two underway here with the Aggies and get that mentality and mindset to take hold. And judging by what we heard today, it certainly has. The number one motto for Fisher is good is not good enough. Talking about today's practice said that there were definitely some good things, but he wasn't certainly over the moon about it. Until the team gets full pads on, he says he wants to see a lot of mental reps. Those mental reps are going to be key for this team. Like he said, as they continue to progress throughout this fall camp, going to have to make those strides and get ready for that opener because there's still a lot of work left to do. Nah, I thought it was very average. And we'll see where we're at at the end of fall camp. The guy you heard from right there, Kellen Mond, continuing his reign as the Aggies starting quarterback. Last year, Mond, one of the guys in the room. Now he's the guy in the quarterback room, taking control of not only that position, but the offense and the entire team, a role he is very comfortable with, with 21 starts under his belt, even though he knows his head coach expects a lot from him. It's a little bit different. You know, last year I was in a competition. We missed something up front or whatever, but uh, we'll look at it and see. Jimbo notoriously hard on his quarterbacks as he was when he worked at LSU with current Kansas coach Les Miles. Now Les spent a lot of time here in College Station last year as his son Ben was a fullback for the Aggies. Now Les has his own stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, trying to bring the Kansas program back to the top. Here's our last look behind enemy lines at the Kansas Jayhawks. I see, I see you too, Coach. Welcome back. Kansas will welcome in the Bears to Lawrence on the final week season Saturday, November 30th. As I mentioned, Les's son Ben, a former fullback for Texas A&M, he entered the transfer portal and is now transferring to play with his dad at Kansas. Jimbo Fisher talking about that earlier today says that he completely understands wanting to go play for his dad and 100% supports the move. That wraps up my day from here in College Station with the Aggies. Matt Roberts, Fox 44 Sports. It's a true compliment. If you're called a grinder, then people respect you. They respect how hard you work, how you show up every day at the ballpark. Blake is one of those guys. Going back, Ferguson, way back, going, going, and we got a tie game. How about that? Blake Alemon has earned everything he's done in his baseball career. A scout told him something that he kept to heart. He goes, Blake, when you step on the field, you got to show everybody that you can play versus somebody who's really big. They got to show that they can't play. And what Blake lacks in prototypical size, he makes up for with a competitive spirit that his parents, Pam and Andre Aleman, saw from a very early age. And we had the little Tykes basketball, you know, and I'd always play and let him win, and I'd make it real dramatic, you know, and he'd be all excited. And then I told my wife, I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat Blake today. He needs to learn what it's like to lose. And he didn't handle it very well at all. My sister's a great athlete herself, and uh, we have some backyard pickup basketball games that didn't end very well. One of us come in, slam the door, all upset, so it's kind of funny. With that competitiveness comes an unbreakable will and drive to accomplish his goals no matter how big. Even walking on at a big time Power 5 baseball program, his dream school, Texas A&M. That's just kind of how my whole life's been. I mean, I just kind of I put my mind on something and I just got work my butt off. My dad always told me, no, you can do anything you want if you want to work for it. And I've taken that to heart. I think back to when he was 13, 14, 15 year old coming to our camps. He always stood out to me, even at that age, because he played so hard. He played with a chip on his shoulder. So you're now being recruited by A&M. I was like blown away. It was like, this is really happening, you know, <laughs> pinch yourself type of thing. And they offered him a roster spot, so, you know, he was invited to walk on his freshman year. The kid that arrived in College Station without a scholarship left an indelible mark on a university that runs in his blood, starting the fourth most games in Aggie baseball history. He's going to just do what it takes to play Aggie baseball, and that's really what he did. Uh, he's a mentor to me. When I got here as a transfer, showed me the way and just he knew what the culture needed to be here at AM. You know, he started out as a walk on, worked out into a uh, scholarship role for us, and um, had an incredible career here. And uh, that's just the way Aggie baseball is. And he's the epitome of Aggie baseball and really proud of the way he's gone about his career. I guess the, the mark that we left in that program was really cool to be part of and to know that I, I left that program better than I got there, which is something I really wanted to do. And just for me, um, I like to be remembered more than just a baseball player. So the fact that I was able to do something bigger than just the game was pretty cool to be a part of. And even with five years grinding away in the minors from Helena, Montana to Biloxi, Mississippi, Blake is staying true to what got him to this point. 
he's not going to play every day, but when he plays, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a guy that goes out there and gives you everything. I mean, the grind is tough, but at the same time, getting to do the game I love, I get to work, I get to play for a living. So, I mean, it's, I'm pretty blessed to be able to play a kid's game for a living. With the major leagues in his sights, Blake is living the dream, playing a kid's game in his hometown. Came to the game, I think it was 2007 or 8, and Seth Johnston, who also went to Bernie, was playing for the missions. And I went to the game, I was like, man, he played, went to Bernie and played, that'd be so cool if I could ever do that. And it turns out I did do that, so it's pretty cool. To, that was come full circle. As tough as the journey back to South Texas has been, the next step to the major leagues will be even tougher. And Blake's going to do what he's always done and make it hard for anyone to deny him that opportunity. I said, don't have those doubts. You know, work at it as long as you can, and so that when you know that you know you can't do it anymore, then you can walk away satisfied. But he still believes he can do it. You can do anything you want if you're willing to work for it, man. I put in a lot of hours of work, a lot of the preparation, uh, the mental aspect, uh, playing the game the right way, play hard, and uh, just work your butt off. Matt Roberts, Fox 44 Sports. Earlier this basketball season, Cliff Carroll became the winningest men's basketball coach in Sol Ross history, but now he takes over in Belton for the winningest coach in UMHB history, Kendall Weiss. Carroll hoping to write another successful chapter in his basketball journey. I, mean, I worked in the dirt. I was a cotton farmer, you know, and, uh, and, and I'm proud of where I'm from. West Texas is in Cliff Carroll's blood. The Meadow, Texas native even named his sons Willie and Waylon. Now he's making the journey to Belton to lead UMHB. I'm kind of like the, the Forrest Gump of college basketball, man. I just kind of fall into great things, you know. But, but the thing about Forrest Gump is he was always moving forward. He was always working in good faith. And while he never joined the Army and met his Bubba like in the movie. Anyway, like I was saying, shrimp is the fruit of the sea. Carroll did serve under a general that opened doors to a tight circle of legendary basketball minds. Like I, I just take little nuggets from everybody I've ever worked for and worked with. And, and I've been blessed throughout my career to work for really the best of the best. I mean, you're not going to find a better group of basketball coaches than, than Bob Knight and Steve Green. You know, people don't know who Steve Green is. They should. Juco Hall of Famer, three national championships. Jim Sagona with Juco Hall of Famer. Pat Knight's one of the great guys in basketball. Carroll's sphere of influential coaches even includes the guy he will be replacing in Belton, Ken DeWeese. At Mary Harden Baylor, I'm going to be drinking from a well that's been dug, you know, really deep, and, you know, so so we're drinking really, really, really cold, really clean water here because of the work that Coach DeWeese has put in. I'm honored to be taken over from his program, and I just hope that we can continue to build and do him proud. DeWeese built a championship contender at UMHB, convincing this West Texas native it was time to lead the championship contender he'd built in Alpine. Everything about Mary Harden Baylor is first class. I mean, there's not anything that they cut a corner on in the entire school, and there's not many places like that around the country. It's truly a special place. It's a place I believe we can win a national championship. You know, it's hard to leave Sol Ross, but really it was a no-brainer to come to Mary Hard Baylor. And when the ball does go up next winter, Carroll will have his Central Texas talent playing with West Texas Grant. Just like what you see with Texas Tech and with Abilene Christian and UT Arlington, you know, those are all my best friends. Uh, we're going to bring that style of play to Mary Harden Baylor. It works, it wins, it's proven, and we're going to have some kids that you're going to love watching play. And these kids are going to give everything they have to this program.